Welcome to Reap What You Sow. I'm Seth Schaefer, and I am here with Mr. Weston Cage. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Mr. Weston Cage is not only a phenomenal musician, but also an actor and a writer. And I've been thinking a lot about the stuff that you're working on. And one of the most fascinating parts that I thought about was the fact that you are you know, a solo artist that can play how many instruments now? Altogether, I'd say about, about 10 now. What yeah. was number one? Drums, of all things. It, 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 the really? rhythm came first for me, and then I started to sing a little bit when I would play, and that started to form the melody, the rhythm together, a composition inspired me. Singing and playing drums is one of the most challenging things, too. I, I, I Yeah, I, I don't know how that happened. It's <laughs> one of the hardest things to do is... is because you're you're using all different limbs of your body, and then all of a sudden you're gonna talk. Exactly. So then from there you go to guitar, piano. Guitar, piano, exactly. What's what's one of the ones that's kind of out there that people maybe not know about that you play? I play a sitar, which I know is getting more more common. A bazooki is another one I play. That's cool. Yeah, a bazooki. Ha- have I you ever it. seen an electric sitar? Never. I had a guy who who came to one of our um, he came to one of our events and he brought an electric sitar and he and he played um, uh, Hell's Bells oh, by wow. ACDC on the Whoa. sitar. Yeah, it's one of the coolest things I got to see. His I love that. Doctor DV. Serious combination of East and West. It sounds like I like that. It was pretty cool. But so then now you're doing some music stuff still. Yes. What are you working on? Uh, we have an album that has been literally on ice for about almost two and a half years now. Um, just waiting for the right time to release it. There's a lot, lot of weight to it that we want to, you know, it's just taking a while. and uh, Make sure it's right. Exactly. And um, I, I played every instrument on this one, so it, it took a little longer than normal, um, even soundscapes. And uh, I really think this one is going to deliver my, my truest sound. It's It's the one that... That's one of the reasons why I did all the instruments is I want it to be completely unfiltered, you know, through me. A lot of a lot of my guys that I, I, I play with and have hired are like, please let me help you. You know, we even feel bad to a degree. I was like, please just let me get through this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's important, I think, to really put your hole into something. Absolutely, absolutely. That way it's just, you know, c- completely uh, derived from the true concepts. And it's it's kind of like a... Um, it's actually based Hollywood based the style I'm doing it's almost like cinematic uh, music uh, film music in a way but it's it's progressive rock as well um, with ethnic elements so it's uh, every every song is like a different movie so the inspiration is through Hollywood technically yeah each song is like like for instance there's a song that goes back to golden age style of the mummy uh, one song that has like a vampiric vibe to it um, all current but each song has its own kind of domain. It has its own undertones, if you will. Exactly. exactly. Wow. So that, uh, you, are you more excited than you were with the original one that you put out? Right now, yeah. I'm most most excited about this one, just because I know it's going to, th- this time it's... it's um, You've learned. I've learned, yeah. There's no there's no influences in this. There's no, it's, it's just directly from, from my heart. Where have you been recording around here? Are you doing it somewhere else, or where do you record all this stuff? I record at Crush Records, North Hollywood, with Ryan Green. It's right um, around here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he's he was phenomenal to work with. That guy is, is expert at what he That's does. That's stellar. How much time would you say you put into this? Because you're playing everything. You're going over all the stuff with this guy. How much time would you say that you had to sit down and work on this thing? The writing to the almost finished product that you have now from from pre-production to post it was about i would say three months of, of non-stop work because uh, when i would leave the studio i would come home and then do the soundscapes so I, I missed out on a week of sleep one time on this on this record and uh kept going i had to finish drums which i mean you know picking up 
clearly I'm, I'm more of an actor because I pick up takes post pre, but yeah, it took about that long. And then uh, I burdened him with uh, 80 tracks to pick from um, <laughs> as well uh, to narrow it down to 12. And so you came in it fully prepared. Going from 80 to 12, that's yeah. a... Yeah, he had to tell me, he's, he's like, you, you do know I, I had to only spend like, he's like, there came a point where I just spent about two seconds on each one. And I was like, I get it. You're not going to yeah. spend a month listening to a record straight. But still, that's a lot of music that you put out. I guess the the beautiful part is that you can store that stuff away for another day if it makes sense, you know? So then when I've what I've learned from you before was that uh, someone asked you a question about you know, music or acting, which one came first? And, you, you know, music was, from, was in, you know, you were, this is, you're born into it. This is your blood. You know, you, this is just who you are. Now, where does that come from? Is it come from, like, was your family musical or anything like that? Were anybody in your family like music or what inspired you to do this? Well, the acting came sim- simultaneously with the music, both same time. Um, but... Um, my grandfather, my great grandfathers were definitely musicians. Yes, I mean the the Carmine Coppola. Um, his his most notable work would be Black Stallion, and then um, Anton, which is Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, who's still alive. He's gonna be turning uh, 102 um, very soon, yeah, in March. Wow, he's still here with us, and he's that's just, amazing. Yeah. I'm sure he's got so much information. Absolutely, absolutely. He just, he just radiates this deep command over art. It's it's phenomenal to be around. Wow, that's amazing. So you that you know you had people who really influenced your whole thing. I mean, what was your what was your um I guess what I'm really looking for is like what was your values and stuff being instilled on you as a kid through music and acting and all the other stuff. What were kind of the things that you picked up on that you love to uh to create a legacy to to heal others or inspire others and and really to kind of have your own personal renaissance do your best to 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 make one now and also be in um in alignment with your integrity you know my dad was always about that you know don't don't sell your your soul you know if you really believe in a artistic path and um to do it all you know he he really they my mom and dad put martial arts um, acting and, and, and music um, in front of me and I feel really pri- privileged to have worked with the people I have in those fields but they just went full throttle with that I mean it was every single day and uh, when I came home from school it was either of the three and those are the things that you like the most yeah still to this day it's and remained. you're still doing all of them all of them I just won the heavyweight champion in Sambo um, my wife got me back to what I was um Actually, maybe a little bit better um, in uh, my my conditioning than I was ten years ago, which is when I was a, uh, you know, starting to get approached by people for the Olympics and stuff. But. Wow, what does that look like? Going in your training, and then all of a sudden, where do you go from that to cons- to to even pursue that passion of yours? Like, of it's martial arts, martial arts. Yeah, like the 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 experience with the conditioning. Or yeah, yeah. It's um, it's amazing because th- there's no excuse to not go once you're 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 set for that date to to fight i mean it is literally and and the the shape you get into is unbelievable because you do not want there to be any discrepancy or or um flaw in your performance you're terrified of that person getting up earlier than you did that day and training harder so you have to uh, i i like to imagine them already as being stronger smarter and faster than i just so that i can exceed them that much more even though it might not be the case but so for how how long does the training normally go to your fight about a month, a month but uh it's it's definitely wise to come in six months early i think so you're either between six months but or a month you're you're up here the whole time saying okay i gotta do this i gotta do this Absolutely. i gotta do this and if you're not exhausted at the end you know as soon as the conditioning starts to increase uh, and your your stamina and endurance is is um, unparalleled to what it was before, you have to find a way to to get yourself to be exhausted again, like like the ancient Greek style of training hard. You'd ever fight in battle. And now, I mean, that goes back to what you were talking about before, though, of integrity, of following through and doing what you say, and really giving it your 
best. It sounds like that's what you did in your music on this last record too. Really persisted and and wanted to make sure that it's perfect. Sometimes it takes time, especially when you're doing it yourself. You know, I mean, it's not always it's not easy. Absolutely, this one was quite an experience. <laughs> with that, what was the hardest part? I would say um, the lyrics. When when the producer went in and was kind of finding a way to take the lyrics and make it more understandable for for everyone, because I I've always been into the um, mystic studies of of, of faith and, and uh, spirituality, so I, I would bring in some verbiage that you know is not not used anymore really, and, and sure. uh, trying to find a way to make it more relatable, which I'm always going to be thankful for, because now I can give something you know 20 different meanings. And, it's amazing on how language changes. Yeah, I joke around with a good amount of my friends that the emoji is the new hieroglyphic. It's <laughs> that's brilliant. It really is. I mean, it really is. It's crazy. All of a sudden, we no longer need to speak to just show you how I feel. Exactly. Thumbs up or yep. And that's Back it. Back to hieroglyphics. And then, so, uh, what are some what are some of the words that do you have any offhand that you know that? Are, that you can explain to me? Some Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm really into the breakdown of the 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 body, the the mind, the soul, spirit. I do believe soul and spirit are different because we can we can be in good spirits or bad spirits. But our soul, I think, is inexorable, always beer. But I use terms like the ka, like the vital spark of the body, the 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 ib, the the heart, and uh, voice of the heart. So connecting both the the heart and the mind is, is, is one one entity so that we're reaching like moksha which is another word I had to scratch which is you know yeah, what is that? Uh, that that's basically like the soul is the Atman and then uh, this is uh, um, from the Hindu side of what I'm into but basically connecting your your true self into your 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 alignment and your, your resonance and basically bringing that into your life finding your true self and then after that life is gonna completely make sense you know you've you've reached the the point where you know your truest self and because i believe that there are things in life that can take us away from that you know we we come in here with that as a child and then after that we get too many um elements of restricted thinking into us and you know we have to break free from that but uh, another thing too is is uh, that, that i use is you know the, the names of the chakras the um sometimes i'll i'll, I'll bring up um uh like na- names of like rituals and incantations and stuff. And we're, we're trying to find a way to bring that feasible way for people to understand. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have understood until you elaborated. Now I, I, I can clearly see now. That. Absolutely. And what I, what I love is that we, we all know that deep down inside already, we all know. And then as soon as there's that, that, that word that's connected to it, it's just like, it's almost relieving in a way, you know, cause I, when I was a kid, uh, I didn't have many many friends. I was very uh, somewhat of a lone wolf uh, artist, and I used to just sit there with books that kind of looks like the one on the table there that my my dad had from you know eighteen nineteen hundreds, and mm. it was just old wisdom. And I just sit there and just what is this, and <laughs> have to spend half my day on a dictionary trying to find this stuff. But you know. so you're the lone wolf. That time I was until uh. I was uh, blessed with the soulmate that I always envisioned myself being with. You know, my my wife, I literally imagined her since I was a child. I was talking about that. Like I used to tell my mom and dad, there was there was gold in my heart reserved only for one person, and then I met her, and it's like you know, a handprint has always been on my heart for her. She unlocked that. You know, before I was very um, not reclusive, but I did like the the dark room. <laughs> I get it. It's part of what you were just talking about, though, finding what you're looking for and finding out who you are first before you can get, you know. I think part of that is who you are and knowing who you are allows you to then find someone that you would match with and and that you knew about. But how great a relationship would I have with someone if I don't even know who I am? It doesn't really work like that. Well, I guess for what... From your beliefs, what what is it that allows people to kind of find themselves? Do you have any specific things that or ideas that you could share with me on how does one 
become. Of course, one thing I always recommend when, when someone's doing some, some deep soul searching or uh, trying to find the higher self, uh, understand the lower self, all the different layers, is to see what archetype you connect to. Um, so if someone's connecting to the heroes um, throughout, let's say, mythology, mm-hmm. I see that they are a determined fighter and that they that they are pursuing and uh, uh, many things in life, and you're going to see it through in the end of the tunnel. Uh, someone connects to um, really, really anything, a shapeshifter or something like that. It could be because they're an artist, you know, all these things. So when, when people really think what, what archetype they connect to, I think they could really start narrowing it down to, to who they really are. And uh, also meditation, uh, disconnecting from from our, our surroundings and really starting to see what would happen. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the ultimate. No. That's the biggest thing is being able to be okay with yourself. Yes, yes. It's, it's really until that happens, you know, we can't, we can't hear who, about who we are. You know, the mind has all these questions, heart has all the answers, and, and the, the mind is chaos, you know, beautiful chaos, but chaos. <laughs> if you're preaching to the choir, <laughs> preaching to the choir, that's, it's, it definitely does. But I do think that there is some, uh, there, there's a good way for sometimes pain can bring, you know, the brightest sunshine and things like that. And, one of those is learning about yourself and going through things in order to break through and then you can reflect and say, ah, that I did have to go through this. And I think that there's a really nice thing that happens when you do is that uh, for me, I, 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 I'm I pretty calm all the time. I'm just like, I know this is where I'm supposed to be. Even if it's good and even if it's bad, I'm like... I, Absolutely. It'll be fine. I was here in a similar situation whenever, and it worked out. And then it worked out again, and it worked out again. And the very cyclical pattern of things going up and going down, just how you handle them, I think. And sometimes uh, sometimes the emotions get the best of us, and we and our head goes crazy. Oh, that's <laughs> a very natural... Yeah, that very natural very place natural. to be. Yeah. Well, so... When it comes to the acting stuff that we're working on, that you're working on now, what's going on? What are you doing? We, uh, I, I say we because my, my wife and I are like one deity with that. Um, nice. We finished um, the prequel to Fear and Loathing. Uh, and that was in Colorado, amazing place, Silverton, um, that I'd never heard of until until then. We're, we're about... There was one point when we went up to this big old uh, California pass. It was like 12,000 feet of eleva- elevation. Wow. Uh, so there were some uh, breathing issues there that were fascinating. <laughs> but we filmed there. The sheriff gave uh, everyone in production access to the town in a way that I couldn't imagine possible. And we just, I, I played this uh, biker that really was an agent, went undercover, this guy, to get close to... Uh, Hunter S. Thompson when he was trying to run for um, being in, in like seriously he was he was full blown in politics and, <laughs> and uh, there was that and then uh, I, I've never been more prolific uh, with, with the acting I mean, this year has been I think all together technically with, with uh, some of the student films too it's been about eight eight uh, projects including uh, NCIS yeah it's going well. It's going well. It, it's it's been nonstop. I, I really think I've uh, um, reached that that point to where I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy with the, with the acting. What what got you there? Definitely perseverance and and uh, you know uh, uh, I didn't go the route to where I I made a phone call to a family member. I was just like you know put me in this or in which which I don't think is a negative thing either. But yeah, I just kept going through that rejection phase that we all have to go through you know every no that brings you closer to a yes and then figuring out your own style and yeah it it just it just that perseverance got me there you know i'm I'm glad i got to feel that it's it's nice yeah it's a weird type of happiness when you get told no a thousand times right is that finally a yes and you're like oh yeah (laughs) Yeah, because you, you earned it and and we talked prior and before and, and that you know f- 
when you're people put you people put everyone on a on, on some sort of um, you know you're just like this you're just like this and it must be nice and oh and like for me I work in a family business then it doesn't mean it just fell out of the sky right you know and it it's the same thing with you you know you you worked hard for what you did and especially with when it comes to the talents that you come when that you have with music alone really you're you're an extraordinary character with the abilities that you do have it it seems like when you were a kid and you're reading a dictionary and stuff it, that that that's work yep before you really knew it you enjoyed it but that For was sure. you know you were really pursuing education whether it's music acting martial arts it was education and you speak how many languages now i could i could literally uh, survive in about I would say five now, five. I guess I've been. Um, That's crazy. <laughs> and right now I'm pursuing a uh, Farsi and uh, Hebrew, and um, there's there's love behind that because my my wife's side of the family is all there's no side of the family, but but her blood relatives speak it, and I I really want to be able to to understand more than I do already. Sure. Um, Would you say it's more challenging? learning a new language if you've known if you know a couple versus knowing one um it can help i think to to know others especially if it's in the same language family but uh i would say russian definitely took up a couple terabytes of my brain uh that was that was um my first one i decided to jump into oh, man. yeah and that 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 made me more flexible linguistically but it also it also was a bit a lot. Uh, yeah, that that was that was rough, uh, but it's helped me with my my acting because I know a lot of people would would like some of that, um, you know, Russian uh, delivery and performance from me. But um, yeah, I mean that that was it helped. I think in the long run. Well, I guess with with uh, the Russian, does it does it come with an accent when you speak Russian too? Yeah. It's not just you're speaking Russian. It's also it comes with a little tonal changes too. Exactly. At one time, I was in a car with a, a man that spoke Russian um, predominantly. You know, he was he was actually in the, in the midst of learning English. And um, I, when I when I told him at the end, you know, which it was you know it was nice to meet you. He, he told me in Russian. He goes, "You have, you have a very thick accent," and I was like. Well, <laughs> I have a thick accent. I'm from here. Okay, well, thank you. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> it is funny how that works. Well, one of the things that we always joke around here is like I do all these goofy voices with my friends and stuff. And um, whenever I talk in this different voice, all of a sudden I, it, you know, I start saying words that I wouldn't normally say. Oh yeah. Same thing with I guess for, with other languages and stuff. I would imagine that all of a sudden you start talking a little differently and you yep. for no reason just because you're like I guess this is what I would say if I was Russian right? absolutely I, I love how the vocabulary and, and diction changes because that it's all, that's what I love about acting the most is, is when you become a different character you're actually becoming another entity what what, what occurs is it, it's very shamanic really right <laughs> right you're 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 practicing uh, you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes, essentially, which I guess is is a challenging part, a place to be, because then you have to constantly ground yourself with "this is who I am." Oh yeah, yeah, you have to have that identity very close to you and to know your true self. And uh, uh, what I do when I when I do a scene is is action. When they say that 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 word to me is uh, I, I've, I've programmed and triggered myself to go into like a hypnosis as soon as that happens to where I forget me uh, sometimes I won't remember what I did so it's hard for me to be told you know that was great and I'm, I have to really think about it but mm -hmm. but then cut I have to come out 100% like like the bell when you're finished with meditation because uh, I've stayed in character before I've had some very uh, horrific um, results from that before I stayed in character as a Colombian cartel and, and uh, I, I stayed in character for about three months because I liked them and um, <laughs> it was pretty terrible, terrible. I, 
I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I can tell that that's from everyone that that does perf- you know does that type of art. It's challenging because you're constantly changing who you are, but you also it's not just oh now I say these words and they're written on the paper. You have to act, but you also have to kind of change your belief systems a little bit to align to this version of what they want. And yeah, when you become a cartel guy, sometimes you probably you might pick up some anger. Or, boy, you know what? For sure, I, I enjoyed the authority and the the um, with the they're very nonchalant. You know, this the spot to do whatever they want, and uh, and uh, I I really enjoyed that. <laughs> but it got out of hand quick. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're like, "What? Well, I've been a cartel guy for the last." Oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone's telling me they're worried about me, but. <laughs> I know how that goes. I do it on accident, but not not like I'm not even an actor. I just do it on accident. I I read a book and then it talks about don't care about anything. And the next thing I know, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> then exactly. one day I'm like, wait, man, I've been kind of a dick this whole time. <laughs> so it is Liberation. So, yeah. So, so sometimes you have to uh, you have to check yourself, you know. But what um are you guys doing any to to bounce to music for a second are you guys doing any tours or is you what what's your next what's your next place is that i know the albums comes out and then before that there are you doing any performances anywhere can anyone find you anything like that i'm definitely um hell-bent on doing a, a debut uh performances you know album party uh, nice. the release party uh but my wife and i are still in um arrangements of, of the plan we're gonna go nice. about with with tours and stuff that's yeah, cool. Probably more more festival oriented. Sounds like a good crowd for you. Yeah. One of the things I did want to talk to you about, so uh, I wanted to touch on the piece of, of clothing and style and things like that. From what I've seen, you've had transitions, you've changed, you know, you, you, short hair now, things like that. Where You're here now, what what are the stuff that you like to wear? What what got you here? Definitely your kind of jacket like that, that, that real deep moody and um thought provoking colors uh i i think suits and uh i'm the extreme uh, suits or or uh or hippie attire really <laughs> the, hippie attire. The, to put it lightly um, but i i like to wear really loose fitting clothing uh, and then also the 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 suits something about that um i got to get back into i think it's it takes some discipline to wear one every day but when it's your job so i mean it's a little different but there, from what I've noticed is that when you get to dress up, people treat you different for no reason. They think that you're, you know, yeah, I guess the suit sometimes is, um, says power or yeah. uh, important, yeah, which is absolutely. nice. But then on the on the other side, I'm I'm just like you. I want to wear jeans and a t-shirt, hang out, and I want to blend in. Absolutely, I, I love this kind of. Uh, this was my father's day jacket my, my wife gave me when we were in Bulgaria filming 211 at, this is a lot of I like when leather jackets become like your second skin like I, I love that and you the, break them in absolutely and the yeah the blue jeans the, the uh, um, traditional was like a rebel without a cause type <laughs> outfit. it's true um, what, and I guess for part of part of it I mean when you look back and you, and you see yourself you have long hair and everything like that it fits what you're doing musically you know it, it's it's not a far-fetched idea for what you're doing music you were really submerged in that culture and what you're doing and I was curious about this I actually had this thought uh, yesterday about you is what are the inspirations when it came to music is who who really did that besides family but was it uh, was at some point was it jazz or was it what what type of musical influences really got you to be now into metal and things like that I'd say uh, New Age was the first one I, I, Enya was on all the time in the house and hearing the different places she would travel sonically really got me into it uh, that's why I'm so atmosphere based I guess um, but uh, flamenco classical those really brought me into, um, too. Yeah, and then uh, 
Oh, my, my guitar teacher really had me wrestle with the blues. And I say wrestle because um, he told me I was in the way of myself with that when we were uh, doing the uh, you know, the whole pentatonic uh, mm. adventures <laughs> with just like, you know, he would play out, uh, you know, a, a chord progression and I would I would do leads and, and go with them and he, w- he wouldn't react until I was getting it right, you know, just kind of r- really starting to, to jive with him. Uh, but uh, blues was one that, that really, uh, I, th- I think, made me grow a lot. In this one. Blues is great. Yeah. What, so what what do you listen to day to day? I would say um, predominantly uh, Middle Eastern music. It's, really? It's, yeah, it's it's the one that really spoke to me when I was younger. It's uh, I think it's haunted with the voice of God. <laughs> it's so enchanting. Yeah, I love um, uh, Greek music. Uh, George Delaris as well. He's a, he's a fantastic uh, musician. Uh, so much emotion there and I love how it just is like it's not deliberately happy or sad it's just mysterious I don't know in a way very and ambiguous yeah sounding. yeah it gives you the chills I love that wow glad I asked yeah that, it's just stuff that I wouldn't have thought of you think of for me I think of like rock and roll of Hendrix or whatever hip hop or this or that and things like that kind of bring together whatever but with you it's I guess uh, from what I've noticed, you vary into history. Love history, and then uh, in, in alignment with that, um, uh, Nordic music, Viking music is is so nice to trip out on and put you in a trance. I think that stuff. Uh, there's a band called uh, uh, Wardruna, um, and they the one of the members comes from uh, uh, history in, in metal, but they're they're getting into runic uh, incantations and stuff and put anyone in a trance no matter where they're from it puts you in a trance you know. wow you know, great exercise music too <laughs> I guess I, yeah if it, is it upbeat sometimes it gets it gets a little it'll get a little upbeat and then uh, when I listen to it it's just like you know, go the extra mile I'll, I'll go the extra mile and laugh that I just went 10 <laughs> I'll look at that extra mile and be like that's nothing <laughs> and it does it for you it does it it does it puts you transports you so what's the what's the connection with history for you? I love um, um, with with history and geography both in in, in uh, combination. Um, it, it really opened me up musically. Mm. Uh, I used to sit down on the piano and tell my mom and dad to choose a country, and I would try to emulate the sound of it, or or even if I didn't know, I would just try to make some kind of musical sense of what I thought that country was. Uh, but I love history to to. To, to learn from mistakes um, of others and to and to also uh, just uh, find the futuristic thinking in the past in a strange way like I, I, I think that the um, the ancients were some of the most brilliant maybe even more in some ways than we are now um, you know it's fascinating what was done I that's the one thing that California always kind of gives me the the little bit of I'm like I like history and there's not there's history here but it's not the same as when you go to Greece and or when you go to Europe and you see something that's been around for ages and ideally you'll get there but what's your I guess you've you've traveled a, a bunch I assume now right if you're if you're in the history and you're in the yeah in, in uh, regards to Greece uh, when I was um, in elementary they were doing a uh, studies in Greek mythology and I had to leave school to go to Greece <laughs> and I came back with just this understanding of, of course that anyone would have it just leaves the books you know hearing the same wind that whistled through those pillars the Corinthians and you know. it's amazing we were in um, when I was in Greece there was a uh, a church that was in a rock and we stumbled upon it going down to this beach and there was a big cave there was this big hole and then you walk in and there's this huge cave and had all these paintings and everything and it was from when the uh when greece was under the attack from the ottoman empire oh wow and you're standing in there and you're like wow this is what they did they were under attack and this is where they put their faith and just wow 
I was also in Greece the same time that Turkey decided to overthrow their government and had that it was not too long ago they were trying to they were having some political fight and uh they're not that far away exactly <laughs> you're, like, you're like whoa very different here but culturally I can't I think a sense of gratitude comes over you when you travel places and you see how things are done and you you really get to learn so much I mean, certainly does did you like the food there in, in Greece oh man it's outrageous and it's just, and fresh so fresh so healthy and equally delicious the fish is very salty because of the water yeah I thought that was amazing I yeah. took a bite and I was like wow it was superb but it was ready to go ready to go no salt needed you're like you lived in the saltiest water but it was um yeah the 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 water itself was gorgeous too i mean everything was we were in uh carpathos oh no lo- lo- lovely it's not a common i uh, just i love that that's great small yeah yeah i had a friend who was from there and we ended up going so it was it was really cool it was yeah, one of the best experiences to really go with someone who's from there and get a uh, real knowledge of the place totally which i'm sure you know you've been around enough you probably start making friends places and where's your where's your favorite place to go um or have been i guess i would say my my wife showed me a, a, a place in northern thailand called pai and it just blew my mind um I, everyone was was saying like there, there, there's even these little rhymes that come from there like pie an island in the sky I think it's 762 turns uh, might be wrong but it, I know it's 700 uh, high 700s up a mountain and uh, there's just like there's there, there are clouds cascading into it how high up you are and, and everybody there's like no violence uh, everybody there is is a, either an artist or a merchant and or both and and there's just so much love for for art and and spiritual and um, there was one moment when I started crying at how beautiful the scenery was and the, the sun just started to set and uh, just this this gold um, energy and just it rays when we're going through the reeds of grass and we're riding our motorcycles and it was, I was it was like being in heaven in a way. But uh, Greece was up there for me. That that was that was the. Uh, I want to go to Pi. Pi is that's where that's where I want to go now. That's you. You vividly described it as a place that I would. I think you would adore. You just fly right into to Chiang Mai and and um, go right up on one of those one of those buses. It, it's a it's an arduous task to get up there. The trip. Some people are are regurgitating to get up there, but because I mean, you're I mean, the whole time you're just spinning. But um, worth it, it's so worth it. I would imagine so. Based off, I guess part of it is, uh, if it's a hard journey to get to, then it's exactly it's probably worth it. Yep. Seven hundred turns. Wow. Uh, so pies, maybe number one, and then Greece is also the other place that you're. Greece is there, and then of course out of, uh, you know, the the Italian heritage and. My family is, is very re- much so retained and strong when I, when I go there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, It's just, it, it's home. It's one of those places where it feels like home. Um, Why? Uh, the, the, just the freedom, the, the, the art and how there's no, there's no um, restrictions or, or judgments when you're emotional, you let that side of you out. Mm. It's, the, I just, and, and also how, much artistic finesse and and just ability that you could see with the the architecture and uh, you know going to an opera and then the food everything has a trace of uh, tremendous art in it and I adore that from the food to you know a painting exactly it has the same it's so stimulating to be there and uh, I got the same thing I I, I you know, my dad had a tutor for me in Italian to keep that alive, keep that language there. And uh, when I got to see my mom's side of the of, of the uh, my bloodline, I went to Sweden and, and got to be there like in winter and see the Scandinavian part of the world. And it's just that that was equally uh, fascinating with with a more of a 
uh, visceral and like a intense energy uh, in regards to the the wrathful beauty of nature i mean those those mountains would speak to you uh, there was one night where I got to see thunder, which was so perfect because I felt like it was Thor, you know. <laughs> thunder within rain at night in, in Sweden by the uh, the ocean and the mountains. That was just epic. Did and, you listen to Viking music? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I had to. I had to. Part of the deal. Huh? <laughs> just like when, when we're in Italy in that, in that powerful, um, um, very intense energy in Rome. I, I love that, that, that imperial Roman energy at the same time. I could go back and forth to those two for sure and be happy wow yeah it's it's amazing on what when you get to travel around you really get to see what's out there and I think there's so there's something very liberating about leaving where you're from whether even if it's just the state you live in and you move to a different state or if it's moved to a different country or even just visit somewhere else there's something that I think is just extremely enlightening yeah and when you get the, I guess the more place you get to go you just get to see how people do things and realize that there's many ways to do things but get different results or get the same result everyone works everyone drives to work or rides a bike to work or whatever but they all do things just small minute ways that are just fascinating even from you know you go to Japan and you're using chopsticks mm-hmm. instead of a fork it's not very far away, but all of a sudden, something different. Exactly. The beliefs and, and the differences. All different. Yeah. Language is crazy, too. Yeah. I, I am... Um, I remember my mom lived in Montreal, and we went up there, and we had uh, we had dinner, and my, my uh, waitress, we said, oh, we just... Um, English, English, please. And she said, "Oh, you know, no problem." And then she spoke English, French, and Spanish. And that was my that was a server, you know. And and to speak three languages, and uh, go different countries, and everyone speaks a couple languages. And then you come here, and it's like, ah. <laughs> we have one. <laughs> we have one exactly. We have one, and that's one thing that I always admire when people do speak other languages because it, it's. I think it's really cool to learn so much about another culture because words, I think, have a lot of history in them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. When you look at the origins, yeah, it's it's uh, amazing how much one word means. You know, putting that together in mosaic of sentences is like incredible, and uh, it's 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 an art form. It takes time. You know, I I mean, having to, I still have to put some some time into it because. If I, if I don't speak a language uh, enough, I'll, it starts You'll to go away. It. Yeah, real quick. We're we're uh, we're about done, but I do want to give you the opportunity. If there's anything that you'd like to, any sort of enlightenment you'd like to share, anything you want to talk about before we before we wrap up, any words of wisdom, we'll take it. Sure, I uh, I look forward to to uh, making people realize the importance and the availability of of inner fire. They don't already have that. Separates us from every other uh, organism. This inner fire, and um, to to really just focus on starting that inner renaissance. You know, we we can all. I, I say that the the trifecta of the A's. You know, what what are you into athletically, artistically, and academically, and from there just make a a tree and keep going. You know? That's great advice. <laughs> That's great advice, well, Weston. Thank you for coming out today. We truly appreciate it. And that's it for Reap What You Sow. It was an honor. Thank you.